if you've ever made a Razor script in Ultima Online before, you might have come across your script not working when trying to read a system message or trying to find out if an action was complete. Maybe you use an ability and you want to make sure it's successful, so you're looking for a system message. There's no luck, so you add a wait of 100 milliseconds, but it still doesn't work. You add a wait of 500 milliseconds, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. You finally say screw it, and you'll just use one second. And it's working for you, but not when you share it with your friend. Why is this? What's happening? Well, if you want to read a system message from the game, Razer needs to receive that data back from the server. This relates to your ping. If your script attempts to look for the message too quickly, you'll miss it. And if you wait too long for the message, something else might happen before you complete the action. So how do we fix it, Jace? Well, after years of making scripts and posting them to uoridgescripts.com, I found the perfect solution that can work on almost any server that uses Razor. The answer? Get Label. Get Label is a Razor command that attempts to single click an item or a mobile and get its description. The best part about this command? It has a built in wait based on the server's response. You can replace that random wait with Get Label, and the script will continue to execute only when the server responds with the label, meaning any other server information like system messages will be available too. Let's learn how it works. Get Label requires a serial to check and a variable name for the result. There's a keyword that literally every UO player has, and it is backpack. So to make the get label work no matter what you're doing, we can use get label on our backpack. How do we know if this actually works? We'll check out this example here. We're saying while we're not dead, we're gonna set a timer to zero. We're gonna get the label of our backpack, and then we'll output the timer. So if I hit play on this, it's outputting the time over and over again, and it's based on our ping. Let's look at a few example scripts and see how we might make them better. Our first example is uh, tracking hostile players. This script is available on the website, but it's basically saying, hey, do we have a tracking skill? Are we currently tracking? And if not, let's go ahead and clear the system messages, pull up the tracking gump. Once the gump exists, then we'll cycle through the hunting options until we find hostile players. We will begin tracking and then we will close the gump. I have play in this script. You begin hunting. It took us six seconds to complete the script. Let's go ahead and stop hunting. Why did it take so long? Well, we have a minimum wait of 500 milliseconds here because we're trying to make sure the gump pops up and we're trying to make sure the system message exists. So how can we make that better? We can actually replace those waits with get label. So here, anytime we were waiting before, we're just get label backpack JSON's ping check. Let's hit play in this one. Alt one. So we were able to get that done now or half a second. Let's look at another example. This one, we're basically just trying to use the item ID skill and check the in-system message for what pops up when you do the item ID skill. Uh, and what we have here is wait for target 500. In general, this is totally enough time for the server to respond that the skill is open. I'm in the game and I hit two on my keyboard. It says we got the message. But if I hit two again, it actually says no message, even though we got the message from the server. If you could see, if I hit it again, the no message actually replies before we get the system message. Why is that? This wait for target will only wait if the cursor doesn't exist. The fact that the cursor already exists, it's just going to skip this line completely. And if it skips completely, there's not enough time to check the server response. What's the fix for this? You guessed it, get label. So let's check out uh, Alt 2, and this is going to run this script now. Instead of using the wait for target 500, we're actually going to say get label backpack, and then check to see do we get the system message. So if I hit Alt 2 on my keyboard here, we got the message, and I'm going to hit it again, Alt 2. We got the message, Alt 2. We got the message. So even though the target already exists here, we correctly wait for the system message to respond. All right, cool. Let's check out another example. Uh, this one's related to selecting a target. OK, so basically we want to target the closest non-friendly monster. Wait 200, then check our system message for no one found. Found a three. I'm going to hit three in the keyboard. No one was found, but it took 200 milliseconds plus a little bit to execute. OK, well, what's the fix for that? We can use get label. It's going to be alt three on the keyboard. Alt three. It's now down to 49 milliseconds, also known as our ping. But this one actually has a gotcha and some of the other Razor commands do as well. You don't actually need to wait for the system to respond. Razor does that automatically. Razor can actually find the target itself without needing a response from the server itself. So if we remove the get label completely and we do control three, no one's found and it matches instantly with no wait. 
I don't have a list of all the commands that are instant in Razor versus needing to wait for the actual server to respond. But if you're interested in, in finding out more about that, let me know in a comment below. All right, we got one more gotcha, and the gotcha is item delay, okay? If we try to lift and move an item, even though we might be able to use get label to know if something happened, we won't actually be able to pick up another item until at least 600 milliseconds goes by. Okay, there is one gotcha with moving items. There's a built-in delay with item moving that is different from get label. Get label literally just is your ping check for responding to the system messages. Uh, however, if you want to be able to move items over and over again, you're typically going to win wait at least 600 milliseconds. Here's a little snippet of code that can actually show you how it works. I'm using a while queued statement after the drop, after the lift and drop. So if I hit four on my keyboard here, we can actually see that it's, it's lifting, but only continues on after that about 600 milliseconds goes by. The game is saving here. Let's see if it handles the save. So you can see that it waited the 400 milliseconds or 4,000 seconds before, before it continued. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Be sure to check out uoridgescripts.com. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe for more UO content. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.